guys welcome back to the channel and today i'm giving you part two of creepy unsolved murders that happened on halloween okay so this the first story is going to be the murder of ronald sisman and elizabeth sometime during the early morning halloween hours of 1981 a manhattan couple named ronald sisman and elizabeth plasman were murdered in their apartment which was located near greenwich village the couple were severely beaten before being shot in the head, execution style. An apartment was completely ransacked. Six men was rumored to be involved in drugs, so authority initially believed that he was the motive to the killings. However, the case took a bizarre turn when a prison informant claimed that one of his fellow inmates had somehow predicted the crime weeks before it had actually happened. The notorious son of Sam, killer David Burks. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but we just gonna say Bert Stewart. B E R K O W I T Z, y'all. Let me say that. In 1977, Bert Stewart was convicted of a series of shootings, which took the lives of six victims and left others and left seven others wounded. There has always been speculations that Bert Stewart was involved with, with a satanic cult and did not commit all of son of Sam murders on his own. According to the informants, Bursawit had told him that his cult was planning to enter a residence near Greenwich Village on Halloween. They would perform a ritual murder by shooting a couple in the head before Sam racking the place to remove incriminating evidence. When questioned about this, Bursawit claimed that cis man shootings and was planning to hand it over to the authorities to avoid some drug charges. While no evidence was found to support Bursa's claim, he did provide an eerie, accurate description of Sisman's apartment. No one knows if the murder of Sisman and Platzman, shoot, of Ronald and Elizabeth. <laughs> no one knows if the murder of Ronald and Elizabeth had anything to do with the Sons of Sam's case, but they are still unsolved. They know it's unsolved. That's what I'm feeling like. It's unsolved, but we just ain't got no evidence. You know what I'm saying? We just have no evidence against these people, but these are solved. They know who did it. It's like, you know, we just we just can't prove that you did it, but you did it. They did it though. Hong, Han, Han, John, Cindy. This is the appearance of Hong, John, Cindy song. Oh, they're Korean. That's what I, don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. Hung Jong Cindy Song was a 20-year-old South Korean student attending Pennsylvania State University. In 2021, she dressed up in a bunny costume and attended a Halloween party at a nightclub in State College. After leaving the club, Cindy spends the next hours hanging out with her friend before she was dropped off at her apartment at 4 a.m. This was the last anyone ever saw her. After Cindy was reported missing, a search was conducted of her apartment. There was no sign of any struggle, but many of her belongings, including the false eyelashes from her costume, were there. It indicated that she had gone inside after being dropped off, but what happened to her afterward? Shortly thereafter, a witness reported seeing a woman resembling Sydney in Chinatown, District of Philadelphia. This woman was inside a vehicle with an unidentified man and crying out for help. A bizarre lead came about in 2003 when a Luxner County man named Hugo Marcus Salinki was arrested after remains of five people were found buried in his backyard. Even though none of these remains belonged to Sydney, an informant told police that Hugo had an accomplice named Michael Jason Kurwowski Jr. had abducted her. I just got some, I just know they're not American. Not American American, cause they all got some names I really can't pronounce. After Cindy was I don't know if you say it on YouTube, Ard. After she was Ard, it's not a joke. And murdered, the two men allegedly buried her body at another location. Kowinski's remains were found in Hugo's backyard, and the informant claimed that Kowinski was murdered for keeping Cindy's bunny ears as a souvenir. Thus far, no evidence was found to, so to tie Hugo to Cindy's disappearance, but in January 2014, the bare remains of a dozen more bodies were found buried on his property. It remains to be seen if any of these will be identified as Cindy Song. And it was hard to check, trying to pronounce his name. Hugo Marcus Selinski. Selinski. 
why well, I can say that for me though. So anyway. But the Kirkukowski Kirkuko how Kalinsky. His name is what's Kalinsky's name? Michael Jason. I should have just called him Michael. Let me Okay, this is gonna be our last story. It's the disappearance of Steve Damon. On Halloween in 1955, Marilyn Damon took her two-year-old son, Stephen, and seven-month-year-old daughter, Pamela, to a supermarket in East Meadow, New York. While she went shopping, Marilyn let Stephen wait outside the store with his sister, who was inside a carriage. Ten minutes later, Marilyn exited the store and was shocked to discover that both Stephen and the carriage was gone. Shortly thereafter, the carriage was discovered about a block and a half away. However, even though Pamela had been left behind inside the carriage, Stephen was nowhere to be found. He has not been seen since. In many cases where infants are adopted, it's sterilized that the perpetrator wanted a child of their own and decided to raise them as an infant under a new name. Over the years, DNA testing has been utilized in an attempt to determine if Stephen Damien was ever given a new identity. At one point, investigators noticed that Steve that Stephen bore a resemblance to the infamous boy in a box. An identified child who was found murdered inside a cardboard box in Philadelphia in 1957. However, DNA testing would eventually confirm that Stephen and the boy in the box were not the same person. In 2009, a Michigan man named John Barnes came forward believing he might be Stephen, but DNA testing also ruled this out. It's possible that an adult Stephen Damien might be living another life however under a different identity, unaware that he was once taken from his real family. However, his whereabouts continue to remain unknown. Well, I really hope Steven is still here, living a life that shouldn't be his, you know? <laughs> hopefully, you know, hopefully Steven living good. I really hope so, under a different alias, you know, alias of you know what i'm saying so guys that's all we have for today thank you for watching my channel and don't forget to like comment and subscribe it's very appreciated and also follow us on all our social medias if you're into cosmetics um at pre unique cosmetic and you can follow us on tiktok facebook instagram and don't forget pinterest y'all please follow me on pinterest <laughs> all right bye guys